guys, Russell here, and welcome to the Spring 2017 update. A little glimpse of what's going on on my workbench, where I am in the hobby, and a little projection down into the summer and the fall of this year. So far, things are really good. Uh, I'm on vacation this week from school, so uh, get a little break from the students and get a little break to um, build some models and go hiking and stuff. So I just want to uh, start off with, um, yeah, my vacation started out well. Um, let's see, Saturday was April 22nd, and the Amps Nationals was held in Danbury, Connecticut. And seeing that I'm in New England, that was only a three-hour drive away from where I live in New Hampshire. So it was a great opportunity to just get in the car and go. Uh, also was the fact that um, occasionally you're going to meet some YouTubers I've met uh, Panzerman Bill a few years ago at the same location, and I had found out that Ian Candler, that 135th scale show host, um, was going to be present from Texas. So I was like, this is a great opportunity, because um, you know, with YouTube and the internet, it's, we do get to speak to each other via the internet and videos and Skyping, but... It's um, it's different from actually meeting the actual person, because uh, most of the time, you know, I'm not going to meet most of you. I would like to, but it's just not realistic. So it was really good to see Ian and talk to him about model building, and to get a little bit of who he is as a person, uh, his background and stuff, and it was really fun. I really enjoyed our conversations, and um, I hope we can meet again sometime in the future. All right, the amp show was good. Um, I brought two models. My um, T no, it wasn't T thirty four. The uh, Joseph Stalin two and my um, Geschutz wagon, which I've been getting a lot of mileage with that model kit as far as taking it to shows. It always uh, it does well. Um, and uh, the Joseph Stalin, I guess nobody likes the the green color. All the judges wrote some interesting comments about the. I need to go look up some reference books on Russian armor of the Second World War. So, okay. Um, so that was nice. And but it got a silver though. So it, you know, the work, the build was pretty good. Just the paint job had some issues. But um, yeah, so it was a three day show. I was only there for one day. So the vendor's room was quite large and there was lots of model kits. Um, Generally, there wasn't too many vendors who, I like to say, are people who just want to get rid of kits. There was one gentleman, and um, he had a few kits, and again, it was the third day, so obviously his boxes were quite depleted, but there was this uh, dragon, King Tiger, Henschel Turret, and it was just sitting there, and it had no price tag on it, and, uh... You know, I was just like, oh, maybe there's something wrong with it or whatever. Maybe it's missing parts. I just kept on moseying. I just went and bought a bunch of resin things. Um, and then I finally just started going through the box, and it was really cool. It was from uh, 2004, and it came with a metal barrel and brass shells and photo edge. And he even threw in some archer dry transfers and a bunch of figures and a motorcycle from Tamiya because he was trying to make a diorama, I think. And it had been started, the kit had been started, the wheels and the torsion bars and the turret and stuff. So, um, I'm not a big, pr that's not a problem for me. Um, excuse me. I have no issue with uh, started kits as long as um, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel with it, you know, because you can always strip the paint, um, and you can always, you know, if there's a few things wrong with it, you can, you can always, there's a way you can fix it, it's not a big deal. If you like model building or being the builder more than the painter, it's not going to be an issue. So, I bought it, it was 10 bucks. I offered him 10 he was like, sure. So, uh, let's take a look at it. So, here it is. And for the most part, it's, um, you know, there's no paint, and everything comes apart. The turret breaks open, and the upper chassis comes off, and the lower. 
I um, immediately checked out the wheels. Um, there was definitely some. When you work with a starter, a starter kit, or started kit, um, you always have to look at what the previous builder was doing or not doing. In this case, the wheels, I felt they could have been sanded some more. So I was able to take all those off and break off some of the torsion bars. The torsion bars were not all even, so the wheels weren't going to sit level on a surface. So immediately took some, to me, extra thin. That's a good quick debonder in most cases. doesn't always work, but in this case it did. Most of the torsion bars all came off, and so just clean it up. File down the wheels some more. Uh, and last night I uh, put all the wheels in with slow setting glue and threw in some weight in the chassis, and just uh, you know the torsion bars all will level out. So that was really nice. Uh, the headlight, uh, he didn't. He obviously wasn't going to bother with the wire, the the connector that goes to the uh, connection box. So I did the same thing to me extra. Broke down that glue, pop it off. Not to do a little bit of sanding and putty just to fix the surface, but at least now I can hollow out the connections and put in a wire. So overall, I'm pretty impressed. Um, for ten bucks, with all the stuff that it came with, it's not a big deal. I'm not too worried about it. I just want to give you a little close up. But uh, yeah, and the only goofy thing was. Um, there's these uh, hooks for the crane if you're going to pop open the lid to the engine. He's got the hooks in the back backwards. So I'm not going to even bother fixing that because um, that would be like a little marker to know that uh, it was the other person's work. But um, it's such a small piece, I don't care. I can always put some stowage or something on it. But yeah, the kit came out okay. It's fun. So now i got another Tiger. Which um, some people might find, I find, well, <clears throat> let's talk about this. So, I've been really focusing on just working on my works in progress all winter, which has been really good. It's been slow, it's very cold down here in January and February, but I managed to get a lot done on my works in progresses. And uh, I will say that uh, 2017 should be the year of many finished builds by Christmas. So it feels good. But what I have noticed though is that I've been just focusing on works and progresses and like that itch to build. I really enjoy building. I think it's just uh, therapeutic. I don't mind sanding wheels and working on indie links. So um, that dragon, that king tiger I just talked about, you know, that's been uh, all last night. That's all I did. It was just like work on the tracks, work on the wheels, work on this and that. So that, that's good. That's like my little outlet because I, I really foresee this year to be a year of painting. Lots of painting. I have, <clears throat> technically, I have many builds that are completely built. They're just waiting to be painted. I got the a Stug 3 that's been in my world for years and it's finally ready for painting. I got the, uh, the Panzer 3 for Hamilcar Barkas's thing. That's ready for painting. And then I have Tiger 131. And by the end of this week, the tracks will be done. That is all ready for painting. I have my King Tiger Porge turret. That's ready for painting. I have a 148 Tiger 1 Late, which was supposed to have been for the Kelly Heroes group build. That's pretty much all built, ready for painting. So. There's a lot of painting in the works. And that's good because, you know, I need to build up on that skill. Um, I think I remember talking to Ian about that last Saturday about I really enjoy building, but, <clears throat> you know, painting isn't something I, I tend to freak out about because I, I don't have as much experience. I got a lot of experience with building because that's all I seem to do. But painting, um, I need to really push that push the, the boundaries and really get into painting much more deeper because uh, that's where you're gonna that's the next stage to the finish line so there needs to be a balance of painting building weathering and so forth uh, one kit that I have been working on all winter and is approaching the finish line is my 
is a zero. This was for the Steve M group build, which I guess this must be done. I, I know just people are still posting on the Facebook page, but I've been working on this all winter, and uh, very excited, very nice. Uh, it's on a stick with a base, so it's gonna that's a nice presentation. Um, currently, I'm waiting for the gloss. I just have been lazy or slow. I'll probably get some gloss on tonight and, and get the decals on and, and final stages, but I'm going to get a closer view. I have been posting it a little bit on um, the Google Plus YouTube modelers. You know, it's really nice. It's an older kit, and so it's got a lot of filling issues. I mean, it's not bad, but um, definitely I do a little bit extra work on it. So, that's really cool. I really like this airplane on a stick concept. I definitely, um, what's another kit that I got? The, that, the Messerschmitt 109, uh, 132 scale from Ravel. I, it's right there. And, uh, it's just sitting there, but that's another plane will be on a stick. It'll be a big plane on a stick, but I've got a big base for it. And hopefully that will get done. Um, you know, the Operation Typhoon build, uh, the figures are in a paint, the early painting stage. And now I'm considering different strategies for what the base is going to look like. Um, you know, with weathering and building up bands, bases and landscape, you know, that's a whole other element to the world of model building, which again, I need more experience. But there's uh, been shopping around for different products. Um, thought about doing it, you know, home, home remedies. But uh, AK is coming out with these buckets of different types of terrain media or mediums and uh, they get this mud bucket you know it's only 15 bucks at scale hobbyist so I've been watching the videos and I kind of really like what it looks like um, I'm sure you could replicate it by mixing and stuff but that also becomes like a it's like cooking recipes I'll just spend the money and buy the the, the pre-made stuff and just it on but my thing is that my base is made out of wood and so I'm gonna have to figure a way I might just get my uh, rotor tool and the cutting wheel start chopping up the top of the base to kind of get that the ruts base a uh, basic skeleton because what, what I want to do is you know show the the motorcycle and the troopers you know it's the, the Russian mud it's like you know October November outside of Moscow and it's muddy and so it always kind of looks goofy if the thing is sitting way up on top of the mug, uh, mud, you know. Um, Got to emphasize the weight. So if I can cut in and make those deep ruts, then I can sit the figure boots and the vehicle actually in and then build the mud on top. That, I think, shows and emphasizes and accents that sense that, yes, it's heavy. They're sinking in the mud and trying to push it out, so... That'll be interesting. Yeah, um, that's about it. Um, even the Henkel, the Henkel that I've had since 2014, I actually did some work on it. I got the greenhouses on, and they're masked with uh, those um, canopy mask sets that you're seeing everywhere. Um, generally, I like the canopy mask sets. They, they go on fast. But what I'm noticing is that when you have a strong curve or an angle, um, they're not really sticking really well. They kind of peel up. So there's probably about five um, stickers that aren't really holding well. So I'm going to have to probably get some liquid mask all type stuff um, and just do that. Or maybe just get some masking tape and do it. I think it's too late for that because I already glued the canopy down, so uh, I'll just crush it. So definitely uh, maybe some sort of mask all. I think Microsol or Microset 
that company, they also make a canopy mask, which I've used in the past. I, I like it. Um, it's just a whole different technique. You're painting the mask on each window pane. So, then once it cures and you paint it, you can just take some tape and just peel it off. So we'll probably take that route. Alright, talked a lot. Um, Tiger 1331 by Michael Vittman. I've completely um, ripped off the tracks as um, I showed on my uh, video on um, workable tracks I made last month. But this week I'll be painting the tracks, weathering them, putting them on. And that tank has been nice. It's been nice because um, I'm improving it. Um, definitely had some, I think the tracks, the vinyl tracks, weren't helping the kit at all. And also the, the color I used for my tracks, it just didn't work. So um, this will be an improvement. And once I get my figure painted, that will be good and, and a base. Because uh, it hasn't been doing well at shows at all. Um, it just doesn't get... One of the big criticisms has been the tracks. And the it's a little weird. I didn't bother washing or weathering the top surfaces of the tank, only the sides. So it clearly is like two tones and I think the judges just don't find that very appealing it, it needs to be uniform so I'm gonna do that get my Windsor and Newton and just put a huge wash on top and kind of blend in so it's a very uniform blended color or tone all right I don't want to talk so much uh, I can go on for a while but um, that's about it I'm just building I'm finishing up a lot of works and, and really going to be looking forward to painting. That's the year, really, painting and, and bases. I think you'll see a lot of bases and some figures with all, with at least half the models I got figures with them. I want to show that human element, which um, I think uh, Panzer Man Bale is always talking about. And um, it's really good stuff. All right. Well, this is Russ Goslin. I'm hoping everything's going well at your workbench, that you're, you're getting things built and you're happy with your builds and you're learning and uh, having a good time. I'm having a great time and really enjoying the opportunity to be sharing it all here with you on YouTube. So model on, be safe, have fun, and I'll see you again here on YouTube. Take care. Goodbye.